When did you start painting? Um, in my head, I think I started painting way before I actually started painting by hand, yeah. right? Um, but around 97, 98. Okay. Um, my name is Antonio Howard. I refer to myself as Peggy's son as acknowledgement to my mother and with the hopes that my demonstration as a man will mitigate the embarrassment that I caused her during my childhood. Um, I'm an artist, spoken word poet, um, solutionary, compassionate, humanitarian, um, and returning citizen. How did you get started producing? such beautiful artwork? Um, I got started producing artwork by just producing work and not worrying about whether or not it was beautiful uh, one way or the other. So like most things important in life, art for me started out as a very intimate and personal um, way of expressing myself. Um, so many of my designs come from uh, many of my designs are rooted in faces, right? So while I was a kid, um, faces to me were always intimidating, protective, kind-hearted. Um, they held the answers to who the people were, the adults in my life, who they were uh, in front of me. And those faces would change um, depending upon the environments they were in, right? Um, abusive faces would turn into compassionate, empathetic faces when authorities would challenge them, you know. So um, many of my images has to have to do with faces. So I started creating faces as a way to come to contextualize my experiences as a child. Um, it just so happened that they're beautiful to other people because they're colorful um, and interesting in some shape, form or fashion. But to me, they were more uh, catharsis than anything, right? Um, so beautiful things come out of horrible circumstances. Um, I reference myself in that regard, right? Because at one point in my life, um, if you'd ask anybody in my life, I was a horrible person, right? I was one of the guys that was referred to as the bad kid, right? The, um, the kid in the community who you didn't want your children around, right? Um, The reference beautiful things come out of that is because I was ostracized so much and spent most of my life in prison. Um, I went to prison when I was 15 years old. I was sentenced to life. I was never supposed to see the light of day again, right? Um, served 26 and a half years. <clears throat> and while I was in prison, I was referred to as everything um, from incorrigible to the N-word um, and you name it. And while I was there, I learned to listen to my inner voice. Um, and in listening to that inner voice, I was around people that helped me cultivate my inner voice, right? And as a direct result of that, I was able to um, develop into a more beautiful person than people see today, right? And I evolved out of that. Everything that you can imagine that prison is, it is, and, and even worse for a 15-year-old child to go through it, um, what it produced was what you see before you today, right? Um, so that's the beautiful thing I'm referencing that comes out of that. What would, what would you like to gain community to experience or to learn from your work? Um, I'm not really sure, right? Um, when, I, when people view my work, I like communities who view my work to learn more about themselves, right? More so than me. Um, primarily because their responses is more telling of the substance of who they are than what my paintings actually are, right? Like the meaning of my paintings are personal and in most, in most cases kept personal. Like I don't share with people the interpretations of my paintings. So what I would like the Gannon community to do is at the very least um, come down, see the paintings, and explore yourself. See what, what, what emotions the images evoke. Um, and have a conversation about them, right? And whether or not you're right or wrong, you know, will be determined by, you know, your own feelings and your own experiences. So the Gannon community should experience itself by coming down to look at my paintings. Is there a life philosophy 
that guides how you perceive the world and how you perceive people? Um, yeah, there are a couple life philosophies, I think. Um, one in particular I've always remembered in my life was um, only when lions have historians will, ha will hunters cease to be heroes. It's an African proverb. Um, and I think I lived my life trying to become my own historian, right? I was called a lion, a predator my entire life. And um, for the most part, there aren't many advocates for people who are perceived as um, the negative influences in the communities, right? So in order for me to tell my story in the way that it's supposed to be told and the most proper way it's supposed to be told, I have to tell it. I have to become my own historian. So I live my life that way, right? My behaviors, my thoughts, my deeds, uh, my actions, my words have to tell a story um, so that the lion that people said that I was doesn't honor the hunter's story. The people who want to see me do the worst in society, the people who want to see me in prison, the people who never wanted to see me out, the people who never wanted to see me succeed. Um, I think I owe it to myself and the other lions I left behind to make sure that I become my own story. Um, the other life philosophy I think is um, one that was always meaningful to me um, and it was that um, when the community doesn't embrace the children, they will burn it down to feel its warmth. Like I was one of them kids, um, shunned by adults, uh, people who didn't want to show me love at all, um, who wanted to exploit me, who wanted to abuse me. Um, and as a direct result, my behaviors, uh, that I, the behaviors that I exhibited um, essentially was geared toward burning down the community just so I could feel the community's warmth, right? That's the only time when the community would cry with me would um, love with me, would share something with me when it was doing equally as bad, right? Um, when it was feeling the pain that they subjected me to, right? So I wanted community to feel that same things. Um, and I did that as a child a lot. I, I hurt people, right? Um, but hurt people hurt people, right? We, we know that. Um, so that was one of them philosophies I lived by when I was a kid, but Growing up now, having evolved out of all of that neg negative behavior, I understand, I understand who I am as a, a better now. So, yeah, I hope that answers the question. Yes, it does. Could you provide us a brief history of your life? Brief history of my life. Um, so, the briefest history I can give is that of a caterpillar. I was a caterpillar, right? I was a marauder, right? Um, um, at least in, in by, by the perceptions of, of society. Um, and through solitude, through self-reflection, through um, private evolution and development, um, I became a butterfly. That's my life. And um, in society, we always forgive the caterpillar once it becomes a butterfly. A marauder, and now I am who I am, and my forgiveness was to be out here again. Um, and now this is me spreading my wings, and this is me showing my beauty to the world. Is it? So, in that sense, what would you say as a butterfly today to all our current caterpillars? Um, I would say that there's a lesson in the loneliness, um, embrace it, use it as the perch upon which you lift off from, right? Um, know that you are not alone, others have walked that same journey, experienced what you've experienced, they may not share their failures, they may not share their secrets, but they exist. Um, and in those circumstances, I think that you have to look internally. Um, you have to close your eyes, you have to go inside your cocoon. You have to think about the world in different ways, in ways that people that say you shouldn't think about the world. Um, and allow yourself to grow in private and in secret until your wings are strong enough to fly away. I love that you mentioned the eyes as I 
look at your artwork, a lot of your figures, either eyes are closed or we don't know if they have eyes. Could you tell us what that representation is for you? Um, stoicism, like adults to me were, were always like this enigma, right? Um, to be a man, to be respected, you have to look people in the eyes. But as a child, to look an adult in the eyes in my community was defined as defiance, right? So um, when you're growing up and you're trying, you're trying to find your face, your place in this world, um, it's difficult to figure out which one you should be, right? Should I be a man? Should I be assertive, dominant, masculine by looking you in your eyes and, and stating my intentions? Or should I gentrifect, hold my eyes downcast as a sign of respect to you? and then one day I'm just supposed to figure it out, right? Um, so for me, a lot of times when I looked at adults, they didn't have eyes because I wasn't allowed to look at them in their eyes, right? Um, and then those that did have eyes, um, it was almost as if I was committing the ultimate sin, right? By looking God in his eyes and blinding myself, right? Because all of the expectations, um, the respect, um, the preconceived notions, the honor that came with adulthood, um, it, it, it dissipated because I could see all your secrets through your eyes, all right? So that's why. Now do you, or would you say that it was the same with the eyes, to continue on about that, with the adults in your childhood? when you were living outside in the world versus when you were incarcerated? I was the same. Adults are adults wherever you, wherever they are, right? Like authority is authority wherever they are. And um, they are the most of who they are when nobody is looking, right? Um, you want to know who somebody is? Catch them when they don't think nobody looking, right? Um, so you can imagine a prison is a place of isolation where society believes that what goes on in there is a form of preparation for others to come out and be better citizens, right? Um, but that's not what's going on there at all. It's a secret that society is not allowed to see for a reason because most of what happens in there is an investment in future returns. Uh, people continuously going back to prison despite people saying we don't want prisons, right? Um, they are jobs for people, right? They replace the coal mining industry. Um, and the reality is if what was going on in there was true rehabilitation um, and preparing people to come back into society to be better citizens, then it means that thousands of people who work in prisons won't have jobs. Um, I don't, I don't, I see myself as, as uniquely flawed, right? Beautiful in the sense that when I paint a portrait, I understand that it's not the absence of flaws that make a beautiful portrait, right? It's the incorporation of all those flaws that give a face character. And that's what makes a beautiful portrait, right? Um, the wrinkles, the, the, the blemishes, all of that. And to me, because I have that and I acknowledge it and I know it firsthand, that's what makes me beautiful, uniquely human um, and a portrait in the making. What would you say to your younger and Um You're right. You're right. I would say you're right. Um, you're right. But you gotta hide your power sometimes, man. They ain't gonna tell you you're right. But you're right. That's what I would tell me. Bernie Mac, something I'm gonna regret. <laughs> You scared him to say something. <laughs> <laughs> Bernie Mac. You know something I think when he says it's all red on here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's I'm getting it out now. I'm getting it out right now. <laughs> oh, he is really like killing it 
right now. <laughs> <laughs> Watch when this joint turn on. Well, I'm a code switch and everything. Well, here's the thing. <laughs> Four score and seven years ago. <laughs> what? You guys recorded all of that, right? No, you didn't. <laughs> hey, see, see, see. Delete that. No, no. <laughs> 